One woman is murdered every six days in Michigan by a husband or boyfriend. And uh, I documented um, 59 or 60 women in 2005 and the same number in 2015. So it's a tragedy. And, the, uh, and to further the tragedy, um, a third of the men who murdered their wives or girlfriends in 2005 committed suicide afterward. Well, Nancy Seaman's case obviously was, was a lot different than any other case I had. She was not a good witness, I'll be quite honest with you. She didn't invoke any sympathy. And I think the jury looked at her and thought, well, she's just making all this up. So in 2004, when the Nancy Seaman case first hit the newspapers, I was keenly interested because it was Jack's case. But what really made me so enthralled was the fact that Jack McDonald actually suffered because of the sentence that he imposed on Nancy Seaman and the reasons he imposed it. I was a judge for 17 years. I had a number of first degree murder cases. In fact, I think I had three first degree murder cases that same year that Nancy Seaman was convicted. Sends these people to life in prison, slept well that night, didn't give it any second thoughts, because they deserved it. Society had to be protected. This was one case I just didn't feel that way. I put myself in her shoes, and I know darn well if I had any inkling at all that I was going to seek my revenge and, and, and clobber my husband and, make, and kill him, I certainly wouldn't do it when he was awake. I would find a time when he could not exert his force over mine. I would do it when he was asleep. So it made me, I had to wonder about people believing that this was premeditated. If it were premeditated, Nancy Seaman would have found a much easier way to do it. Nancy Seaman was rolling around on the garage floor. Uh, he had jumped on top of her, tackled her. She reached for a weapon and swung it at him. No, that's self-defense, that's classic self-defense. She should not have gotten a day. An expert can testify as to the traits and characteristics of a battered woman but they can't give the ultimate conclusion that so-and-so is a battered woman. And that's what was missing in this particular case. There's a, the case law is uh, People vs. Crystal, which is 449 Mishap 578. I'm just quoting from it. This is the important part. The expert may not opine whether the complainant is a battered woman, may not testify that the defendant was a batterer or guilty of the instant charge, and may not comment on the complainant's truthfulness. Dr. Eleonora Walker, who was an expert in the field of battered woman syndrome, testified that a battered woman could come from a high economic group, a low economic group, they can be a professional person, a non-professional person, they can be passive, they can be very active, they can be very educated, they can not be educated. But she didn't testify and couldn't testify that, in her opinion, Nancy Seaman was a battered woman and then explain her actions both before and after she killed her husband. Here you are. The expert, Dr. Lenore Walker, is right in that courtroom, and all she can do is testify generically to what spousal abuse is all about. So Dr. Lenore Walker was precluded from giving that testimony. And I have to follow the law, and I couldn't allow it. It's just so unfortunate that I wasn't on the jury because if I were on that jury, I would have said, no way, no way did she premeditate this. This is something that still weighs so heavily on her heart. I don't know what she would do if she had it all over. To, she had no choice. There was no going back. She, it was at that moment she felt, it's him or me. He's gonna kill me. And so she struck him, not knowing that that first blow killed him. She didn't know that. Nancy wasn't herself. She was defending her life. She was in a, a self-defensive mo mode like any one of us would be. 
and, and now we know the consequences. And that's so sad. The jury's a trier of fact, and I shouldn't interfere with their verdict. And I, and I didn't, although in my mind I thought that she was battered. Once I got the letter from Dr. Lenora Walker explaining everything, then I began to think of it. It didn't start weighing more heavily on my mind. So it was probably months afterwards. The attorney came in, the appellate attorney came in some maybe eight months afterwards and, and uh, filed several motions. One of them for his new trial, ineffective assistance of counsel, things of that nature. I reduced the verdict from first degree to second degree murder. I was reversed by the Court of Appeals uh, with one descending judge saying that what I did was within my discretion to do. It then went to the federal court and Judge uh, Bernard Friedman conducted a hearing where he actually took testimony from Dr. Lenora Walker and heard what her uh, conclusions and opinions would have been. And then he ordered a new trial. He then was subsequently reversed by the uh, federal courts, Cincinnati uh, Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. So I'm not being critical of the jury's verdict in that respect because they didn't have all the information. Had, had they had all that information, I'm not saying they would have come up with a different verdict, but there's a good possibility and probability that they might have come up with a different verdict. Maybe second degree murder, maybe manslaughter, or maybe even self-defense. And, and they didn't have that option because they didn't have all the information. And where Nancy Seaman is, there are a lot of other women just like Nancy. If, if, they, are, if they do not have a full defense by having an expert witness testify, not generically to a case, but, but specifically to a case, you're not going to have justice in this country. It's obscene that you could, she couldn't have the proper defense. And that breaks your heart. And that's what broke Jack's heart, Jack, Honorable Jack McDonald's heart. He couldn't live with that. I couldn't live with it either. I don't know how anybody could live with that. I, I did write a letter to Governor Snyder asking for clemency. And uh, what happened was I was contacted by Ms. Carol Jacobson. She's the director of the women's, what is it, clemency. And the more I thought about it, I just thought, it's on my conscience and I have to write a letter. So I, I wrote a letter and I told, I, I didn't want the governor to think I was some sort of liberal do-gooder. I hope I'm a do-gooder, but I don't think I'm real liberal. So I wrote him a letter trying to explain who I was and why I was writing the letter. And I want him to know that I didn't take this lightly. This is something I thought about quite a bit. So I tried to, first of all, explain myself that that I'd never reversed cases, I'd never changed jury verdicts, and I knew that she was exhausting her appeals through the court system. So the only way Nancy Seaman is ever going to see the light of day again is if the governor acts, and I hope he does. You know, I took a big risk when I reversed that case. I'm an elected judge. I thought, God, when that hits the newspapers, that's the end of McDonald as a judge. It took great courage on his part because it was election time. And um, in this area, Republicans are lauded, prosecutors and judges, when they're really tough on crime. To the contrary, I got letters from all over the country congratulating me, which was a complete surprise. I thought, this is the end of me. <laughs> and I told my wife that. I said, be prepared. Your husband's no longer going to be a judge come the next election. But it didn't happen. So I would hope that Governor Snyder would take a serious look at this case, read everything, read Dr. <coughs> Lenore Walker's letter to me, read the transcripts from Judge Friedman's evidentiary hearing, read the letter from the psychiatrist at the, at the uh, prison, 
And he has to come to the conclusion that there's an injustice here. That's all I can say. It's um, a terrible crisis, and we're not dealing with the issue um, as well as we should in the United States. Uh, it's um, still a, a matter of ignorance um, among judges, among prosecutors, among defense attorneys on how to handle these cases, on how to handle um, women especially who defend themselves and their kids. Uh, they are not given um, any kind of mitigation of the, of the circumstances of their cases. Uh, even the law that has been passed across the country allowing um, abuse to be presented by an expert witness um, who discusses the battered woman's, so-called battered woman syndrome um, those, those expert witnesses are not given enough latitude, especially in Michigan law, to really make the connections between this woman's case and the, um, and the history of abuse and what it means. And so it's not working. The, sel the self-defense law doesn't work for women in the courts. I don't know that it works that well for men either in the courts, but certainly not for women in the courts. For women who are defending themselves and their kids alone, um, there is, you know, it's a situation of usually she's the one dead. Usually in most cases, because there are, you know, five or six or women per year uh, who kill their abusers or act in self-defense against their abusers. Um, well, as I said, there are 60 women murdered in Michigan per year at least. Uh, but so it's like vastly different. Um, and over the years, the number of women who kill their abusers or kill men, intimate partners, has gone way down thanks to shelters, thanks to public education, thanks to the battered women's movement you know, across the country. While the, the level of women murdered by husbands or boyfriends has not gone down significant, it's stayed the same for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm.